Welcome to another edition of In the Pink Seat. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Mulroney, and I'm very excited to have with me here today, Jasmine Frizzell from RBC Group Advantage. And what we're gonna be talking about is how to really add extra benefits to your team that add a lot of benefit to your team to hopefully keep them on board. So welcome, Jasmine. Hello, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. My pleasure. So I talk with a lot of people from RBC, but you're in a very unique position because you're not the one throwing money at people, getting them financed <laughs> to, to actually have a clinic. You're helping them really once they have a clinic to retain their team members. So how did you get into this field? Yeah, that's a great question. So I actually started on the personal financial side um, when I originally started RBC six years ago. And then just this role became available and I was super excited to work on a team um, with the topic that I'm very passionate about, which is, you know, financial wellness and the, the importance that that brings to a company. So, um, yeah, it was just kind of a natural progression and I'm super excited to, to be a part of it. That's amazing. So when when people are trying to retain retain team members we see a lot of times especially since the pandemic hit there is a lot of flux of team members coming and going sometimes it's because mm -hmm. you know they are no longer a fit for where the culture of the practice is going or they had to leave because of childcare, and now we're starting to see our industry come back together and mm -hmm. us being able to get the team members that we need but there's still that fear out there that team members are still going to leave that the grass is going to be greener on the other side and I'm sure you're feeling that's quite palpable with the clients that you work with as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And especially now, right now, when there's all those government programs available where employees could stay at home and receive a comparable salary, um, bringing them back into the workforce has been a struggle for a lot of um, employers, healthcare and, you know, other industries alike. So um, a program that I can offer get set up is a great way to bring and entice those employees back. And like you said, retain and, and stay for the long term. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about this retention plan that you have that will actually help our practices. Yeah, definitely. So what my role with RBC is, is to work with business owners to uh, implement and enhance their financial savings program. So when I say financial wellness and financial savings, I'm talking about uh, retirement savings for their employees. So group RSPs, tax freeze, pension plans, um, you know, we have all the investment vehicles available to, to help these businesses and structure the programs that are going to work best for them, uh, their clinic and their employees best. Um, the way that these programs help with retention and attraction is because, um, you know, retirement savings, a lot of people don't have a lot of knowledge about what that's going to look like and what they're going to need for, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the line. So what these programs do is, is help bring a little bit of stability and a bit of, um, you know, financial education to the workplace to provide these employees with, um, you know, that little bit that they're a little bit extra um, to make their retirement in the future a little bit comfier. Mm -hmm. How many employees do you find right now are financially well-versed and how many clinics out there are offering this kind of financial wellness for their teams? So I would say that more employees than not do not have the financial education that they need to, you know, comfortably retire at a time that they think is going to be best for them, um, know how much money they're going to need in retirement, um, as well as how much to put away now based on their current salary and, you know, like time frame to retirement. So that's really where we can bring in that advice piece and support. And um, especially with clinics, you know, you're going to have employees that are fresh out of um, university and then you're going to have employees that have been in there for you know 30 years right and they're all going to require a little bit of a different um, support based on you know their stage of life their financial situation and where they want their retirement to go so um, I think being able to tailor that advice individually to each employee um, is much better and more successful than us, you know, taking the 10, 20, 30, 40 employees, lumping them into one, you know, investment plan and just really hoping for the best. In most cases, that's not going to work. So because we can bring that one on one support to each employee, um, they're going to be much more successful in the long term. Mm -hmm. With a lot of the employees, especially if they like, I know a lot of people that I worked with now and in the past were very much like hand to mouth. So money comes in, money goes out exactly. and much being accumulated and they're renting instead of owning and they're under mm -hmm. a lot of financial stress. So what can they be thinking about differently to help themselves get out of that financial stress? 
Yeah, that's a great question. And that's one of the things because RBC is a, you know, an advice based bank, we can talk to these employees about more than just that investment piece. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, especially throughout the last year, we did a lot of budgeting 101 events, right? So we could talk to these employees, maybe they were on reduced income or a spouse was laid off, or like you said, kids at home, you know, there's a lot going on. So we could talk to them about that budgeting and say, hey, you know, we can cut down on this and, you know, it's going to alleviate a bit of stress in this area of your budget. Um, and especially with healthcare, I mean, depending on the, the type of clinic, they were able to stay open throughout the entire pandemic. But what other stressors took place during that time, right? So it might not just have been financial, but you know, a lot of stress involved uh, revolving the entire pandemic. So if we can help alleviate a little bit of that in terms of the financial side, you know, we're going to be, we're going to do our best to help with that. Mm -hmm. So if a clinic is going to go into this, what would it look like mm -hmm. for their team? Because we keep mentioning this customized program. So it's not a one size fits all, but if you mm -hmm. have a ton of employees that can feel like maybe a roadblock for some of the employers as well, because they're not sure how they're going to navigate this. Yeah, and, and that's a great question. So, I mean, depending on the location, if it's in a big city or if it's, you know, rural, we have virtual advisors that can dial in from anywhere, um, which is kind of where we're at in this world right now, very virtual. So we can onboard and enroll and provide these financial appointments to staff wherever they may be, um, you know, like I said, rural, city, doesn't matter. Um, whether it's a clinic with five employees or a clinic with 500 employees, um, we're still going to be able to provide that same level of advice. The time just might take a little bit longer. Of course, if we're doing five employees, we can get that up and running in a day. If it's 500, we're going to have to you know, go over a few weeks or a couple months to, to have these appointments take place. But, um, you know, the advice and that support's not going to be downgraded by any means in terms of the size of the company. Um, and like you said, it's a tailored program. So we could have two identical, you know, clinics on either side of the street of each other, but we can structure their programs completely different. It can be um, however is going to fit their needs needs best and um you know there's no plan a b or c that they have to pick from there's plan a to you know infinite right and with the employees do you find that there is much hesitation with them going into this kind of program because i know sometimes you know when there's mental health help there's resistance there sometimes financial help there can be resistance there having coaches come in there can be resistance there because it's different than what they expect with most of the employers that are out there it is. And, you know, some people will think, view it as, oh, you're taking money off my paycheck. Like, no, I need that money for whatever it is. Right. But when we talk to them about, you know, how the money comes off their paycheck pre-tax and, you know, what that contribution looks like after it's been invested for 5, 10, 20, 30 years down the line. And we can really paint a picture of how that's going to, you know, reduce the stress that they're going to have as well as you know make ensure that their retirement is going to be that much comfier and closer um you know sometimes things click and then they see the value in participating in that program and if the clinic is matching their contribution um it's double right so instantly they're getting that 100 percent return um again we have calculators that can show them what that looks like invested for the next you know foreseeable future um, and I don't think anyone's going to look back, you know, 30 years from now and say, oh, my gosh, why did I save so much money? Right. They're all going to be very thankful that this program was in place, um, you know, from from their employer. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone leaves, so it's great when they're in the practice, but if they leave, what happens to that program? So we have a couple different options. Uh, so we have a for the group RSP program, um, that money vests immediately. So um, usually what we recommend is uh, an eligibility period, same with other benefits that they have in place, you know, health, dental, that sort of thing. You know, they must work for you for three to six to 12 months before being able to participate. After that time, usually you can gauge whether they're going to be a longer term employee or not. Um, we do have what's called a deferred profit sharing program, which has an additional two year vesting period that if the employee leaves um, from the day that they enroll two years later, um, the company gets their portion back and the employee uh, will obviously keep their portion that they've make, been making off of their paychecks, but it all depends on, um, again, what's going to work best for that employee. I had a dental clinic not that long ago. He had staff who had been with him for 
20 plus years already, right? So retention wasn't really the issue. It was more about rewarding. Um, and then, you know, in a few short years, it'll be about attraction once those employees retire. So um, there's a lot of different angles that this program can come into play and, you know, and help out the clinic. Now on the employee side, again, then we'll get into the employer side with the different generations. So say you're talking to 20, 20 year olds versus 30 year olds versus 40, 50, 60. What is the mindset difference between the young ones and the older ones when it comes to this kind of um, benefit? Honestly, these days I've noticed that the younger ones are the one, are the the employee the employees that are more willing to participate because I think they see you know how expensive things are getting. When our parents were younger, they could buy you know a house for fifty thousand dollars. Now we're hearing articles all the time about how you know, this generation is never going to be able to afford a property. So when we talk to them about, yeah, your RSP can be used for first time home buyers, that clicks. Um, you know, when we talk to them about, hey, you have 50 years left before you're going to retire. Okay, yeah, that's, you know, $50 every two weeks isn't going to, you know, make be a detriment to my day to day, but it will make a big difference in the future. Um, you know, so I feel like the younger generation is really picking up on, on the importance of saving. Um, I mean, also those in the older generations, are, they still see the value. They know, yeah, retirement's coming up in the, in the nearer future. So, I mean, they'll take what they can get, right? Especially depending on the industry and what their current salary is. Maybe they haven't had the opportunity to be able to save. So, so with this program, it comes right off your paycheck automatically and you're getting a match from your employer. So it adds that much quicker. Amazing. So... We've dealt with the employee side of it, now the employer side of it. So yes. what I hear, even when I introduce bonus systems and practices is they're like, but I'm paying everyone so much money already. Why would I give them more for them to do the same mm -hmm. thing? And I'm sure you get that, that block all the time from them. How do you, yes. how do you talk, talk around that? Because that is a big resistance point because team is your biggest part of your overhead. So if you're increasing it, Mm -hmm. by the perception of what you're adding with the value of this, how can dentists wrap their head around that? Yeah, I mean, especially for dentists, um, you know, training an employee is not an inexpensive job to do either, right? You hire somebody and it's likely going to take, you know, three to six months before they're 100% up and running. So the cost of uh, losing that previous employee to, like you said, something greener on the other side, um, that's a huge expense. It's a huge expense to train. So if you're able to just retain that those key staff, you know, long term, that's already saving money in your pocket. Um, as you mentioned, some companies have bonus structures in place. So maybe just rejigging a portion of that bonus to, to go to be directed into the, you know, RSP or a more registered uh, savings program is something that we have conversations about a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, just when they see the value of the retention piece and the attraction piece and um, keeping these employees long term, that in itself um, is a benefit. And on top of that, to implement a program like ours at RBC, we don't have any initial setup or annual fees associated with it. So whether you start your clinic with five employees and then, you know, in 10 years you have a hundred employees, there's no additional cost to have more employees participate. Mm -hmm. Just to put it in perspective, how much on average does it cost to have to hire someone new and train them up when we have them running, not at full tilt for those first six months? So we were told and that it, it, the, to rehire costs an additional nine months of salary, right? Just because you're losing the productivity, you're having to spend time training, your other staff are going to have to pick up that slack, which adds additional stress to them, which could re result in, you know, sick days, absenteeism, you know, all that stuff that kind of falls under that category. So, I mean, the average plan that I set up, especially for dental clinics, I would say the employer matches between uh, three to five percent um, every payroll. Um, so when you're thinking about three to five percent of that employee's pay to, to keep them, you know, that much longer versus nine months of salary to rehire, retrain, and not to say how long that role would remain vacant as well. So, you know, there's a lot, a lot that goes into play. Absolutely. And there's the whole mental health piece with it too. 
being an owner yeah. <laughs> and being like, oh my goodness, I have to try and find someone new and get them trained up. And you know, if they don't work out, then I'm back to square one again. It is. Yeah. And that's got to be stressful. <laughs> it is super, super stressful. Um, so there's definitely the retention piece. I think sometimes we forget as owners that it costs us a ton and these people are not like sometimes, unfortunately, some dentists, not all of you, but some of you <laughs> kind of think it's like, well, if it, they're a little bit disposable, if they don't make me happy, then I'm going to get rid of them. But if we can try to find that mutual ground where they're getting that benefit, um, of investing in their own career in your practice and you're investing in having them in your practice to help you grow your career and whatnot. It's, it's a win-win and we do need to find those win-wins, mm -hmm. especially with the new generation coming up. They are looking for a place that they feel respected and they respect the owner and what they stand for and everything else. It's not just about what are the dollar bills. It's also about the culture and um, their community awareness as well as a big part of it. And I think when they Definitely. see people wanting to take care of their employees, well, that's a big draw mm -hmm. for the new generation. Yeah, definitely. I think so too. It's that rewarding piece, right? You want to obviously do something that you love, but also feel rewarded for what you're doing. So this is just that, you know, that cherry on top that em employers can implement to show that they care and, and help out in more ways than just that paycheck. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Are there any other ways that you're seeing employee employers really trying to attract people right now? Are there some innovative things that they're doing to try and, you know, stay on the cutting edge of getting those new employees while there's such a shortage? Yeah, well, definitely right now, um, I've probably my the industry that I'm getting the most traction with is healthcare. You know, dental clinics, of course, but healthcare in general, because they have such stressful, hectic jobs that um, you know, through having to stay throughout the pandemic and, you know, really working with them, uh, implementing something like this, like we have, we have clinics calling, asking for programs like this. Um, you know, I have also, I actually just read an article the other day that, you know, some employers are trying to get key employees back into the workforce by helping them with down payments for new properties. And, you know, I think people are getting creative, um, with how they're attracting people to come back to work or, you know, again, back into the workforce so um i think there's a lot of different ways but for me being in the financial industry of course and being a part of a program just like this with my employer um i would be hard pressed to go work at a different company that didn't have something like this in place mm -hmm. um i say it all the time you know i log in and i'm like oh my gosh i have so much money but it's just really because i don't even notice it i come off my paycheck i budget around it you know my RBC matches my portion. And so, you know, um, that's kind of what I, I talk to business owners and, you know, doctors about is, you know, this is really, this is something that's very beneficial. Mm -hmm. Have you seen with the practices that you've worked with um, in their practice, when they've implemented this, are you seeing an increased level of productivity, decreased overhead or anything like that, that is measurable for them as well? Uh, I'm sure that there definitely is. I haven't gone in after the fact to really divulge and, and look at that. But I know that um, the most recent clinic that I sold, um, he was very, very happy with the program and he had 95% participation rate, right? So I mean, that just really goes to show that um, employees want something like this. And they're, they're happy to participate when they fully understand the value um, that it's going to bring to them in their, their future. So um, I think that I think the participation rate kind of speaks for itself in that sense, too. That's interesting with the participation rate. So if, if an employer decides they want to bring this in, the employees have a choice whether they buy into it or not, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, we recommend that every employee still take that one on one financial review just mm -hmm. because they might not fully understand the program that's being put in place. They might not realize that the contributions come off pre-tax or so their take home isn't hugely affected. Um, we really do when we go in, beef it up and really explain the value. And, you know, we talk to them about how this is something that your employees put in place because they, they care about you and want your, your financial well being to be taken care of. So, um, I, once we talk to them about that and really show them the numbers, um, most often they, they all are, are gung ho to participate. Perfect. And ongoing, do they get that financial counseling and education? Yes. Not just at the beginning, but throughout. 
Yes. Yeah. We, uh, we, we recommend annual reviews or, you know, anytime that there's a life change. So, you know, they're married, they have a kid, you know, they buy a new house or whatever the case is, anything that's significant happening in their life, we recommend, you know, just giving RBC a call or booking an appointment with your preferred advisor, because, you know, we can tweak certain things, you know, maybe when they started working at the clinic, they were 25 and aggressive growth investor, but now they're, you know, 42 and they have kids that are, you know, they're trying to save for their education or whatever the case is. There's things that we can do to help tweak that, um, you know, adjust their contribution amounts or, you know, maybe lower their investment profile to be best suited for their stage of life. You know, when you start investing in your younger years, like I said, it's a, it's very different than where you're going to be in 20, 30 years down the line. Um, and because we are a full service bank, we have those branches all over, not only the city, the province and the country. So you, whether you move from clinic to clinic or, you know, across the country, we, we can provide you that same advice, um, in all stages of life. Amazing. Well, is there anything that we missed discussing today before we head out? No, I think that's it. I think if anyone, you know, is interested in learning more, it's definitely something to, you know, just at least find out a bit more information and how it can work for, for them and their clinic. And yeah, that's really it. But yeah. Perfect. So if they do want to reach out and get more information on it, Jasmine, how can they do that? So we do have a group advantage website um, where they can go and get more information as well as, I mean, um, I think you have my contact, so feel free to pass that out. Um, but definitely you can just call RBC and they'll, they'll point you in the right direction. Okay, amazing. Well, I really appreciate you coming and sharing this knowledge. I'm hoping that some dentists are waking up to the fact that we need to retain <laughs> our talent. And this is an interesting way yeah. to do it that has benefits on both sides. So thank you for sharing your knowledge today, Jasmine. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Take care.